Happy Sabbath and welcome to the Campbell Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, this is our online Sabbath school. We are so excited for you to have you join us today. Uh, we know many of you join us from all around the world. Um, and we also want to say a special welcome to our local church members uh, from Campbell. Just um, thankful that you guys are joining as well. Um, we also will be meeting in person, as we have been doing uh, for the last several weeks at our church at 1130. So if you live in the Bay Area, we invite you to come uh, to our church in person uh, today for the Divine Worship Service. We are so excited about the series that we've been doing on Sabbath School, Back to the Basics. We've heard uh, from so many of you throughout the week that, um, or the weeks, I should say, that this has really been a blessing that it's opened, um, it's given you, helped you to have understanding, clearer understanding of prophecy. Um, and it's back to the basics, but in a simple way. So we're hoping um, that it's so simple that you feel comfortable to be able to share it for yourself. Because what we're learning is that so many depend on the pastor or depend on the ministry leader to do these things. And for Jesus to come, this gospel and the truth has to go into all the world. Mm -hmm. So that means that God needs each and every one of us. Like if we say we want Jesus to come, we need to be in some way actively sharing the gospel because the world is big and there's so many people and God um, has commissioned all of us to do that. And I we find that so many people don't do it, not because they don't want to, but they don't feel comfortable or they don't understand or they feel like they're not equipped enough. And so we are praying that this these Sabbath school uh, programs that we're doing will help you feel equipped to be able to do that. Before we pray, I just want to mention that um, for our local church, Campbell um, and Mountain View uh, Church, um, we are having a food drive tomorrow, um, and it begins at 3 to 5, um, from 3 to 5, I should say. And um, this is to help feed the um, people who feel like they need a little bit of extra help with some um, extra groceries. Um, and if there's anyone that you know uh, locally that um, could benefit from that, definitely share with them. Um, about the food drive tomorrow at our church. And it's also at the location of the Mountain View uh, Church as well. And so um, welcome you guys to, to share that information with others locally. All right. So uh, we are going to go ahead and jump in. All right. We're going to pray and jump in. We're going to pray. Um, by the way, for those of you um, who may be... Uh, trying to see this on Facebook and you're not seeing it, if, if, if some of you people- it, If I they're know, seeing it, they're not hearing you. Yeah. <laughs> if, if some of you on YouTube maybe know, like I've posted it on Facebook that they need to come to the YouTube link, but um, just as an FYI, okay? Because I, I don't think the link is coming through on Facebook. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, just uh, pray mm -hmm. and jump into this. So let's do it now. Heavenly Father, we uh, ask, Lord, that you would uh, be with us as we uh, jump into this study. We continue our study on back to basics of Bible prophecy. Lord, please, please, please open the eyes of your people, open the hearts of your people. And Lord, may we see and understand truth and share it um, uh, so that you can come again. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. So we're on YouTube and we're also on Instagram. Yeah. Right? Okay. So we, so, we welcome uh, our, our, no, there are some people on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Praise God. Yeah. And Instagram and YouTube. All right. Hallelujah. Cool. It well, might, it, yeah, it, it might be that, um, uh, hopefully you're on my Facebook page. I have the power of the lamb Facebook page. It, it should be on my Facebook page, not power of the lamb, but just in case y'all, and you're not seeing it on my page, go over to the power of the lamb page. All right. Okay. They didn't hear you. <laughs> no, they're on. Well, there, no, people the, are the responding people, on Facebook. If they're, but if they're on yours, they didn't hear you because they didn't see it. Well, but, tell other people. Yes. Yeah. Tell other people. All right. So let's um, let's begin. I'm going to share my screen here. Let's see. All right. So um, we're going to take a look 
at Daniel chapter 11. We're going to, I want you to notice seven things from Daniel 11 verses 40 to uh, actually to Daniel 12 verse, verse one and two. So we're just going to kind of put them in bullet point here. Number one, Daniel 11 verse 40, at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. This is the king of the south representing Egypt, Mm -hmm. right? Pushing at the king of the north, which was symbolic of Babylon. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Number two, the king of the north comes against him, that is the king of the south, like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter, uh, enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. So number one, the king of the south pushes at him. Number two, the king of the north pushes back and overcomes and defeats the king of the south. Mm-hmm. Number three, um, Daniel 11, verse 41, he shall enter also into the glorious land. He shall enter into the glorious land. So after the king of the north defeats the king of the south, mm-hmm. he turns his attention to the glorious land. And Okay. Well, I'm just kind of setting the stage. We're going to come okay, back to this. Okay, because some maybe may be asking, what is the glorious land? All right. So, and I'm going to, well, you'll see. You'll see. Let's just, this is back to the basics. Symbol. Back to the basics. So we don't want to lose anybody. Yep. Daniel 11, verse 44. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. So now we have tidings that are troubling the king of the north. Mm-hmm. So number one, king of the south, Egypt pushes against Babylon. Number two, Babylon pushes back against Egypt, defeats Egypt. Number three, turns his attention to the glorious land. Okay. Number four, tidings out of the east and the north trouble him. Number five, as a result, he goes forth with great fury to destroy and utterly make away with many. Mm-hmm. Number six, and this is a Daniel eleven forty five. He shall plant the tabernacles of his palaces between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Number seven, Michael stands up in Daniel 12, 1 and 2. And number eight, the king of the north comes to his end. Okay. All right. So don't worry about it right now if you're like, oh, pastor, I'm I'm not going to remember these eight things because I'm going to show you something very powerful here. Daniel 1 through 4, the history of Daniel 1 through 4 unlocks what's happening in Daniel 11, 40 to 45 and 12, 1 and 2. You say, what do you mean? I was going to say, so how does it unlock? How does it unlock? Well, I want you to notice this, okay? Um, Daniel, I'm sorry, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 37 and verse 5, Jeremiah 37 and verse 5, um, the Bible says here, then Pharaoh's army was come forth out of where? Egypt. Mm -hmm. And when when the Chaldeans that besieged Jerusalem heard tidings of them, they departed from Jerusalem. So here you have uh, uh, Babylon is coming against Jerusalem, but Egypt comes to their aid. So Egypt is pushing against Babylon. We're talking about literal history here. Mm-hmm. These are the events that occurred just before Daniel chapter one. Okay. So in this verse, what do we have happening? Translate that into Daniel 11. The king of the north, south, south. Okay. Right. is going to war against the king of the north. north. Okay. Egypt is going to war against Babylon. All right. Mm-hmm. Notice what happens next. Um <clears throat> In Ezekiel 30 and verse 9, verse 19 and 21, Therefore thus say the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt unto Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So God himself is saying that the king of the north, even though the king of the south, we're talking about history now. We're not talking about what's coming in the future. Mm -hmm. I'm just making, I I want you to see the parallel of what's happening in in the history of Daniel chapter 1, 2, and 3, and Mm -hmm. 4. God says that the king of the north, Babylon, is going to defeat Egypt. Mm -hmm. Okay? So uh, it says, he shall take her multitude, take her spoil, take her prey, and it shall be the wages for his army. I will give him the land of Egypt for his labor, wherewith he served against it, because they wrought for me, saith the Lord God. 
Thus say the Lord God, I will make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're thinking Daniel 11 with me, you're already beginning to see a parallel because in the history, just before literal Babylon captured literal Jerusalem, mm -hmm. <clears throat> literal Egypt mm -hmm. came to fight against literal Babylon mm -hmm. and literal Babylon fought back against Egypt and would defeat Egypt, okay? Okay. So notice again, Jeremiah 36 verse 37 verse 6 and 8, 6 through 8. Then came the word of the Lord unto the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Thus shall ye say to the king of Judah that sent you unto me to inquire of me. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt into their own land, and the Chaldeans shall do what? Come again and fight against this city and take it and burn it with fire. Mm -hmm. So God is telling us here that after mm -hmm. the king of the north, Babylon, defeats the king of the south, Egypt, okay. he will turn his attention to where? No, I'm not <laughs> sure. So, I mean, to the... Uh-oh. He'll turn his attention to, to Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Okay. To Jeru Remember, okay. they were trying to capture Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Then Egypt comes up to help. Mm -hmm. South okay. comes against the north. Mm -hmm. The king of the north, Babylon, fights back against Egypt, mm -hmm. defeats Egypt, and then turns his attention back to Jerusalem, to, Jerusalem, okay. to the glorious okay. land. Got it. Okay. okay. Got it. All right. Put a one in the chat, y'all, if you're following me so far. I want you to notice... Ezekiel 26, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Check this out. For thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will bring upon Tyrus, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, a king of what? Kings. Kings. From the where? From the north. From the north. With what? Horses and with chariots. Wow. With horses and with chariots and with horsemen and companies and much people. Mm -hmm. In other words, here you have Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. king of Babylon, literally being described as a king of kings. Mm -hmm. Now, who does that title ultimately belong to? To Jesus. Isn't it weird that this title would be attributed to Babylon, mm -hmm. to Nebuchadnezzar? Mm -hmm. A king of kings. Yeah. From the where? North. North with horses mm -hmm. with this is all, almost to the t the exact description given in daniel 11 missing one thing mm -hmm. a whirlwind well, i was just gonna say a whirlwind yeah but there's definitely a parallel I can there's see. a parallel there mm -hmm. so by the time we get to daniel 1 where jerusalem has been besieged this is what's going on mm -hmm. this is what has happened mm -hmm. right daniel 237 thou O king, speaking of Nebuchadnezzar, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven has, has given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and great glory. So, the king of the north, after defeating the king of the south, mm -hmm. turns his attention to Jerusalem, God's people, mm -hmm. the glorious holy land. Right. This does not happen until Egypt is utterly defeated. Mm -hmm. How, what does that translate into, uh, into for us today? What it says is this, mm. God's people will not be the ultimate target of the king of the north right. until the king of the south has been it's utterly really defeated. defeated. Right, okay. Right Got now, it. the battle is between king of the north, king mm -hmm. of the south. Mm -hmm. And to make it really practical, the king of the south just represents atheism and all the isms that are like anti-Bible. Right. Right? And that can fall, that can be anything, right. right? Even religions that are anti-Bible, right. anti-two witnesses, according to Revelation right. 11. We don't believe mm -hmm. in the word of God. Mm -hmm. So that could be new age. It could be atheism. It could be any other religion that does not take the word of God as its authority. It says, right. no, nah, we don't believe in the word of God, right? We are right. anti-two witnesses. Okay. The king of the north must is, according to Daniel 11, is going to first defeat Egypt, wipe it out, mm -hmm. <clears throat> not connect with it, not make a league with it, not be like, oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. Let's get the atheists and let's work together with the atheists mm -hmm. to turn against the remnant. Mm -hmm. That's not happening. Mm -hmm. 
Egypt is going to be defeated, wiped out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are y'all make? Are y'all catching this? And just so I mean, I know you just already explained it, but just to be clear, you know, as we when we're looking at Daniel eleven, and in the times now, it's not talking about literal Egypt. And if Daniel eleven, is rep, yeah, yeah Daniel rare. eleven is is using a parallel right. of actual events of history right. to show what's going to happen in prophecy. I just don't want people to be confused, okay? Because I, you hear things like that, yeah. about Daniel eleven and the king of the north and south, and it's Egypt and it's this, and that. yeah. So, just so to be this is symbolic language happening in Daniel eleven forty to forty five, whereas the literal events mm -hmm. in history is what took place surrounding Daniel chapter one, right. Right? right? So Daniel 1, 1, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it, right? right? So here we're, we're, we're going back to language of the abomination of desolation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What is the abomination of desolation? What did Jesus say? When you see armies surrounding Jerusalem, mm -hmm. armies surrounding Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. So we know that the abomination of desolation, as we've learned in previous studies, has mm -hmm. to do with ultimately the entire world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When Daniel eleven forty uses ships and air and sea, mm -hmm. that's everything. Mm -hmm. You can't jump in the water. You can't go run in the land. You can't go up in the air. You are totally surrounded. Right. This is what God is saying. Right. God's people are going to be totally surrounded mm -hmm. symbolically by land power, sea power, air power. That's, that's the king of the north surrounding mm -hmm. and besieging Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So far, so good. So let's keep moving. Um, we're going to go to Daniel 2. In Daniel 2, verse 38, uh, we see that um, God makes Nebuchadnezzar ruler over the whole earth, mm -hmm. right? The literal king of Babylon is ruling over the whole earth. Daniel 2, 38, he has made thee ruler over them all, mm -hmm. okay? So he has, in a sense, entered the countries and is ruling over everybody. Right. It is his dominion, right. his kingdom. This is paralleling, beloved, exactly what we see happening in Daniel 11, mm -hmm. verse 40. Mm -hmm. King of the south pushes against the king of the north. The king of the north will push back against the king of the south and then turn his attention on the glorious land. Mm -hmm. He will also enter into the countries and overflow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Well, I'm seeing um, I'm, I'm, the comments are coming pretty fast. So I'm just trying to make sure there's no confusion about well, if they've missed the first couple of, um, of of programs, they may not understand exactly who the king who of the king north, that, right. north is. Yeah, and so I think it's important. Well, yeah. So we're, we're we, we can say go back and watch yeah. those too, but but we're gonna come to that. Okay, we're gonna okay. make sure we're gonna make sure that we remember that. Well, well, we just just covered now the king of the north. The reason the king of the north in Daniel 11 verse 40 is described as coming like a whirlwind is because the whirlwind is used to every time. Well, most of the times you look in scripture, mm -hmm. you're going to see the whirlwind is connected with the glory and presence of God. Mm -hmm. So Daniel 11 verse 40 represents a counterfeit in the, in the book of Ezekiel chapter mm -hmm. one. You guys can read this. Ezekiel sees a whirlwind coming from the north. Mm -hmm. And inside or connected with that world when he sees the glory of the son of man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a counterfeit appearing of Satan that's happening in Daniel 11 mm -hmm. and verse 40. Right. Right. So Daniel 11 verse 40 is a threefold union between something in the land, something in the sea, something in the air, the dragon, the beast, the false prophet. It is not just the beast and the false prophet. It is not just apostate Protestantism and Catholicism. It is those two with the appearing of Satan as Christ. That is what defeats atheism. Why? Because for an atheist, seeing is believing. All right. So just to slow that down just a little bit, because I know I'm just, I, I think I'm reading some confusion in the chat. So just to make sure that people are understanding. So just unpacking that a little bit again, um, three, 
the rule, two entities and then one, I like to say false miracle. Satan coming so, back as, yep. as Jesus. This is but the then also, threefold union. Right. The threefold union. But the miracle, the, the false miracle of bringing the dead back with him. We're going to, yeah, okay. we're going to get into that as well. Right. Okay. Actually, that's where we're going right now. So okay. watch this. Troubling news comes to Nebuchadnezzar. Mm-hmm. Because remember in Daniel 2, right? In Daniel 2, he has a dream. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know the, what the dream means. Mm-hmm. Then Daniel tells him the meaning of the dream. Right. And, and the troubling news for Nebuchadnezzar is found in verse 39, because mm-hmm. it says, after these shall arise another kingdom. Mm-hmm. This was the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. Mm-hmm. That would have been troubling to Nebuchadnezzar. What? Mm-hmm. My kingdom's going to be taken over? Mm-hmm. Going to be destroyed by who? By a man by the name of Cyrus. Mm-hmm. Cyrus, everyone, is a type of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Watch this. Remember, Cyrus was a, the king of the... Medo Persian Empire. Right. Those are two empires that come together. Watch this. Jeremiah 50, verse 9. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the where? From the north. From the north country. So do these tidings that Nebuchadnezzar hears that his kingdom is gonna fall, are these tidings connected with the north? Yes. Yes. Because God tells us that this other nation coming to destroy Babylon also comes from the north. Mm -hmm. Let me read again. Isaiah 41, verse 2. Speaking of Cyrus, who raised up the righteous man from the east, called him to his foot, gave the nations before him, and made him ruler over kings, and gave them as the dust to his sword, and as driven driven stubble to his bow, calling a ravenous bird from the east, The man that executed my counsel uh, from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Cyrus, king of the Medes and the Persians, watch this. The Medes came from the north. Persia came from the east. Okay. Troubling news from the north and the east. That's Daniel chapter 2. Okay. So what does he do? In Daniel (laughs) 3... Nebuchadnezzar sets up an image. Mm -hmm. So just give me a one in the chat if y'all are following what I'm saying so far. The king of the south, Egypt, comes to fight against the king of the north, Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar fights back against Egypt, defeats Egypt, turns his focus on the glorious Holy Land. Mm -hmm. But then he hears troubling news from the where? Regarding the north? And the east. Okay. This troubling news from the north and the east leads him to set up an image Mm -hmm. and commands everyone to bow down. Mm -hmm. You guys, this is exactly what we see happening in Daniel chapter 11, Mm -hmm. those last five verses. Watch this. Daniel 3 verse 17. What happens when Nebuchadnezzar sets up this image? Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and I'm not going to read the whole thing here. Mm-hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego won't, won't, won't wow. bow, down, mm-hmm. bow down. Right. Verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of what? Fury. Fury. He is angry. Right. And he issues a death decree. Mm-hmm. Y'all are not listening to me. He issues a death Mm -hmm. decree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put a one, no, put an eight in the chat, Mm y'all. This is this is more than one worthy. This is eight worthy. Put an eight in the chat if you are following. He issues a death decree Mm -hmm. out of fury. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And what happens? They take Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and they throw them in the fire. And this is when it is at this moment that you have the appearing of a fourth man Mm -hmm. who Nebuchadnezzar says, according to Daniel 3.25, the form of the fourth is like who? The son of God. Mm -hmm. You have the appearing of the son of God. Watch what happens in the next chapter. How many, do you know what happens in Daniel 4? Um, no. All right. Daniel 4. I couldn't see the Bible either. 
Okay. In Daniel 4, the king of the north is bound. Mm. Mm. Remember what happened in Daniel 4? Nebuchadnezzar was told, you know, repent from your sins. Mm -hmm. He doesn't repent. Mm -hmm. And he has a dream. Mm -hmm. And in the dream, the trees cut down and a band, a band. And I want you to notice at the bottom of our screen here, that word band uh, around the iron and brass mm -hmm. is the word imprisonment. imprisonment. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar is imprisoned for how long? Seven okay. years. He just goes wild, right? Mm -hmm. He goes wild. Mm -hmm. Like dwelling in the wilderness. And eating grass. And <laughs> eating grass. Eat. Yeah, he was having a mental health breakdown. Yo, <laughs> watch the... Look. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. Because let me show you what's happening here, all right? We're going to take a at a glance. We, I've just tried to catch you up from Daniel 11, uh, verse 40 to, to 12, 12, 2. So I want you to watch what's happening here. Because what you have is three different places in the scripture where the story's parallel. Revelation 12 to 14, Daniel 1 through 3, and Daniel 11, 40 to 12, 1 and 2. Watch this. In Revelation 12, we have a deadly wound. Mm -hmm. Revelation 13, we have a deadly wound right? Yes. That's given to the papacy mm -hmm. in 1798. Mm -hmm. That parallels Egypt coming against Babylon in Daniel 1 through 3, mm -hmm. right? The literal history of Egypt yep. fighting against mm -hmm. Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. which parallels the king of the south pushing against the king of the north in Daniel 11 verse 40. Okay. Then we have in Revelation 13, the deadly wound is healed. Mm -hmm. It's healed through miracles, Okay. Some kind of miracle, which we know to be the appearing of Satan as Christ. Right. This is what heals the deadly wound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This parallels able to have power over atheists, atheists and over, over the king, okay. the king of the south and totally wipe out the king of the south. This parallels Babylon defeating Egypt in the history, mm -hmm. right, that we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. which parallels Daniel 11 verse 40. The king of the north coming with a whirlwind, mm -hmm. chariots, and ships against the king of the south. Got it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Jax, I see your question. We're going to come to that. All right? We're going to come to that. Who is the dragon? Mm -hmm. We're going to come to that. That might be in our next study, but we're going to come to that. Number three, Revelation 12 through 14, you have war with the remnant. The dragon is going after the remnant, mm -hmm. which is the very same thing as Nebuchadnezzar turning against Jerusalem mm -hmm. to besiege it, which is the very same thing as the king of the north entering the glorious land. Mm -hmm. Now you have troubling news from the north and the east. Revelation 7, the sealing message from the east. Mm -hmm. Revelation 14, the three angels' messages. This mm -hmm. parallels Nebuchadnezzar hearing that a kingdom is coming to overthrow his, mm -hmm. which parallels troubling news from the north and the east mm -hmm. in Daniel 11, verse 44. All right. Mm -hmm. Spencer, I'm coming to you. I'm watching your comments. Okay. Some of you have not seen the previous presentations. I'm going to strongly encourage you to go back. If you're hearing for the first time, the whirlwind and miracles, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to come back to that. Okay. But, but just, I got you. I got you. Mm -hmm. Now, now we have, uh, uh, as a result of this troubling news, he sets up the image. There's an image that is set up, Revelation 13. There's mm -hmm. an image set up because of the miracles. An image is set up, which parallels the image in Daniel 3, mm -hmm. which parallels in Daniel 11, the king of the north planting his tabernacles between the seas. It, he's setting something up. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in Daniel 11, 45, which we have not gotten to yet. Okay. We have fury and a death decree, mm -hmm. right? In Revelation if 13, if you don't bow down, you're going to die. Right. If you don't receive the mark, you're going to die. Right. Re uh, Daniel 1 through 3, y'all don't bow down to this image. I'm going to throw you in a fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Daniel 11 verse 40, in great fury, he goes to do away with many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. In Revelation 14, you have the son of man appearing on a cloud. Mm -hmm. In Daniel 3, you have the son of man appearing in fire. Mm -hmm. In Daniel 12, 1, you have the son of man standing up, mm -hmm. preparing to, to resurrect us. the dead. Mm -hmm. hmm. mm -hmm. Aid in the chat if y'all are catching this, yo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
So watch this. The whirlwind is not legislation yet. The whirlwind is simply his appearing. Mm -hmm. Legislation, we're going to see. Death decree, we're going to see, comes in verse 45. We're going to see that. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 20, Satan is bound after the Son of Man comes. In Daniel 1 through 3, actually verse uh, chapter 4, you have Nebuchadnezzar bound for seven years, king of the north. In Daniel 11 verse 40, in Daniel 11, 40 to 12, 1 and 2, or actually verse 45, you have the king of the north coming to his end. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is all of these, what happens in Revelation 12, 13, 14, Daniel 1, 2 and 3, mm -hmm. and Daniel 11, 40 to 45 and 12, one and two, they all parallel. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the same thing playing out, mm -hmm. one in history, two in prophecy. Okay, so just pumping the brakes a little bit. Um, so do you, I mean, they do parallel. And do you think that um, the confusion from the literal to what's um, what's going, like literally what happened to what's going to happen and they're so closely parallel is what confuses people sometimes. No, no, because most people haven't have never heard this. Right. So they they haven't compared these histories. What I'm no, they may not have compared it like this, how you have like yeah. the three, like to see it like that, but yeah. just kind of cherry picking here and there in the terminology and the events and being, you know, do you think that confuses people? Right. What's confusing people is that they're not going to the scripture to allow the scripture to interpret the scripture. Okay. So we're coming up with things like, well, what would the tabernacles be? Well, I think that might be, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I see your question. Yeah. Well, you know, why should we go to a, to a, a, a symbolic interpretation? Well, the reason is because after you get into Daniel 11 is taking us through Old Testament history mm -hmm. and then into New Testament history. Once you get to Christ, there's a transition. There's no longer a literal temple. It's the same reason why Daniel 8, the sanctuary being cleansed, is not talking about a literal temple on earth. Mm -hmm. It's talking about a it's it's talking about a symbolic cleansing mm -hmm. of a heavenly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. It's symbolic language mm -hmm. because we're now under the you know, Jesus has died, ascended, gone to heaven. Literal Israel is no longer the Israel in focus. It's mm -hmm. spiritual Israel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's no longer a literal temple of the Old Testament. It's the sim it's the spiritual temple in heaven, mm -hmm. okay? But I don't want to go off into that too much because I think we are all on the same page in terms of how clearly, right, mm -hmm. this is. Um, so, There's Brian... That. I'm going to, I'm going to invite you to, in fact, let me see, let, let's, why don't we. No, to what people need to watch the earlier ones. Watch yeah, the early just ones. Just go back. Just go when back go, the last three yeah. weeks and they can find them. They're yeah. on YouTube and on the Facebook, um, on his personal Facebook page as well. Yeah. YouTube is the, um, from Power the Lamb Ministries is the best way to find it. Um, the, the questions are coming so quick, but there was one specifically saying, and you can just answer well, the whirlwind. No. Okay. <laughs> if the Sunday law happens in America before Jesus appears, I mean, I'm sorry, before the ant Satan appears as Jesus. Okay. Here in America. Let's just let's just go. I'm gonna answer that question. Okay. Okay. I'm answering that question. <laughs> you're building up a lot you're of questions. Question, your question bank. <laughs> yeah. So just remember this: if you go to Isaiah 60, 66, mm -hmm. you see there that Jesus, that the Bible says the Lord will come with a whirlwind, with chariots, like it literally describes, it's almost, almost word for word what we read in Daniel 11 verse 40. Mm -hmm. The coming, Elijah taken up in a whirlwind, mm -hmm. Job and the whirlwind, Ezekiel and the whirlwind. The whirlwind is almost synonymously used to point to the coming of the presence of God. Right. Daniel 11 verse 40 Satan is counterfeiting mm -hmm. the coming of Christ. This mm -hmm. is what Ellen White calls the overmastering delusion, delusion yeah. right? Mm -hmm. This is what sets things into action. And because people don't understand this, because people have never really, Adventists have never really taken this into it as part of our prophetic explanations, right. where we're forcing all kinds of things to be up. Sunday law is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. It's about to happen right now. Mm -hmm. See, 
we've missed out, we've left out the most major element of the entire book of Daniel and Revelation. Mm -hmm. It is the appearing of Satan counterfeiting Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what deceives the whole world. That's what leads the whole world to get on the same page. It's a miracle. It mm -hmm. takes a miracle. So let's go back. Let's, let's go Daniel 11 verse 40. Mm -hmm. At the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. The king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots, with horsemen, with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and, and shall overflow and pass over. We're translating this, okay? Mm -hmm. The difference, watch this. We know that the second angel's message is given twice. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 14, 8, and then Revelation 18, 2. Listen carefully to this, y'all. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 14, 8, they're following another angel saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen that great city because she made all nations drink <laughs> of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Mm -hmm. That message began to be given in 1844. In Revelation 18, 2, notice what it says. This is the fourth angel, right? Mm -hmm. The loud cry angel it says he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen. And notice what it adds. It has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, what is a habitation? What's a habitation? A place where... A place where you, where you live. Yeah, you dwell. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between someone visiting with you and someone coming to live with you? If they live there, they're inhabiting your home with you. They're there in person. They're, 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 they're there yeah. for a while. We're here to live. Yeah. What the Bible is telling us here is that Babylon now becomes literally the dwelling place mm -hmm. of demons right. who are appearing as our loved ones. When Ellen White says through the two great delusions of Sunday sacredness and the state of the dead, in the immortality of the soul, in <laughs> Revelation 18 2, notice what's added. Babylon has now become the habitation of devils. See, mm -hmm. up until this point, and even today, we have visitations mm -hmm. from evil spirits, right? right? Man, you know what? My, my dead, whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. appeared to me, and it was, uh, it was visitation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They appeared, and then they disappeared. And we're like, whoo, close call. Mm -hmm. No, y'all, in this time of trouble, when Satan counterfeits the second coming of Christ and makes it look like the dead are with him, mm -hmm. prophets, mm -hmm. loved ones. Mm -hmm. They are not here visiting. They are here to stay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One in the chat, if y'all catch that. Mm -hmm. This is why this is going to be such an overwhelming delusion, y'all. It's because, like I said, it's like we're entering mm -hmm. into a whole new world. Mm -hmm. In a sense, you could say this. You could say, that this whole world will literally become Babylon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now God's people, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in a strange land that wasn't theirs. Right. What? Babylon, where? That's how it's going to be for the remnant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're in a whole new world mm -hmm. run by a demon who is claiming to be Christ. And, you know... It, it, that's, I mean, I'm hearing, I'm seeing, you know, people saying like mercy, wow, like this, you know, just being blown away by this concept and thought. And just thinking about how we have this easy, and I, I would say, and I don't, and I don't even want to use the word relative compared to that time, an easy space and experience now to be able to share the gospel so easily without the world when ha haven't, that yeah. hadn't happened yet. Because it, because we'll still, we're still called to be preaching and teaching and spreading the th um, third angel's message. That's why, um, or the three angels' message. Sorry, that's why um, um, it's going to trouble. That's right. That's that, why it's troubling Satan himself. Because we're still going to be doing it. But how difficult? And I was just going to say, it's going to be extremely. We've said this on the other programs, but it's going to be extremely emotionally difficult emotionally difficult to do that during that time. And if we struggle to share the word of God now under such easy, easy 
Yeah. And I don't say relatively relative. Well, I guess I do say relative compared to that time. Yeah. Then I don't know if you, if you can't, if you feel like you can't do it now, I just, I just pray that you get the courage and that God will work in your life to be able to do it because it's going to be extremely difficult during that time. Yeah. So I'm seeing people, you know, some people think the time of trouble is going to be really bad because they're going to, you know, it's going to hurt. They're going to really like, could, you know, you know, change your mind. No, (gasps) change your mind. No, (laughs) change your mind. No, no, right. No, 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 no. Yeah. It wasn't the physical pain that, that, Right. Was Jesus's time of trouble on the cross? It was the mental, mental anguish. Yes, and, and that's and what people need to understand. Says that he died of a yeah of a broken, broken heart. heart. Mm-hmm. It's going to be the the overwhelming mental anguish of yeah. what do I believe? Yeah, like like spirits are appearing to me and telling me yeah. you are misquoting mm-hmm. Revelation twenty. Mm-hmm. You are misquoting. You don't understand Zechariah fourteen. You are misquoting this verse. And this. Satan will be quoting verses and demons will be quoting verses. It's become the habitation of devils. And many Adventists are not prepared for that. No. We're thinking, oh, yeah, our understanding of the time of trouble mm-hmm. is so like far from what the Bible is telling us. Mm-hmm. That so many of us are unprepared to face. Listen to what Ellen White says. Great controversy, page 560. Many will be confronted by the spirits of devils personating beloved relatives or friends and declaring the most dangerous heresies. These visitants will appeal to our tenderest sympathies and will work miracles to sustain their pretenses. We must be prepared to withstand them with the Bible truth that the dead know not anything that and that those who they who thus appear are the spirits of devils. And I have to say that it's so important. I mean, it's something I wanted to say before you read that, but that is powerful. I mean, to just you know, uh, you know what we're talking about clearly showing that. But you know, I'm just thinking. Okay, and you know, I'm a therapist. I'm thinking from a mental health stand or, or, or at that from that stance. Mm-hmm. At that, you know, there's so many different personalities, right? We all have different personalities, and. This is like, it's supernatural on, I mean, Satan is going to be doing something um, that is demonic, but working, you know, a demonic miracle. I want to call it that instead of it being a miracle, because it just sounds like it's not a God miracle. It's a Satan miracle, yeah. but God is going to be working a God miracle with us too. And I say that course, because yeah. there, there are half, half of the world is, there are introverts, half, half of them are extroverts. And so for like, well, it, the different personalities, those are people who are already afraid to speak out or speak their mind or, or tell the truth about something when uh, everyone else is against them and coming at them. There is like, you know, half the world who that is afraid to, to, you know, to do something like that. So what I'm saying is under those circumstances to preach the gospel under such resistance from the world, mm-hmm. it's going to take a supernatural Holy Spirit power to work in us to be able to do that as the remnant or absolutely, God's, you know, it's just, it's not going to be, it yeah. we couldn't, I just can't see some personalities doing that and succeeding in that unless, and plus the supernatural thing, uh, work of the Holy spirit, plus having such a strong connection with Jesus as being their strength and just, you know, God working in their lives. Like yeah. it, it can't be this passive relationship with Jesus yeah. will make you, will absolutely. allow you to do something like absolutely. that. Absolutely. This is, this is the, this is the power of that other angel that comes to lighten the whole world with his glory, mm-hmm. right? This is the mm-hmm. outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the loud mm-hmm. cry, the latter rain. Mm-hmm. This is happening simultaneously. Mm-hmm. So this is what empowers God's people in this time of tremendous trial and trouble to go forth. And that's why Ellen White says, in the time of trouble, we went forth to preach the Sabbath more fully, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We talked about that last week, but I'm going to do this. Let's, we're going to, this is all, these are all quotes about the spirit of the, de- of the dead appearing. Uh, here's a quote about, mm-hmm. do y'all remember the quote where Ellen White says, I saw a train and it seemed like the whole world was on it right. and the conductor was Satan himself. Oh, yeah. This is what this is talking right, about. Right. This is when that train starts to roll. Mm-hmm. I mean, in a certain sense, spiritualism is here now. I'm right, not saying of that. Course. But it is when Satan appears that it appears that the whole world is on that train mm-hmm. and the stately conductor mm-hmm. is Satan himself. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, now, 
we're, we're just gonna, we're, I, I'm skipping all this. I'm skipping all this, right? I want you to see this. Okay. The miracle working power manifested through spiritualism will exert its influence against those who choose to obey the obey God rather than men. Communications from the spirits will declare that God has sent them to convince the rejectors of Sunday of their error, affirming that the laws of the land should be obeyed as the law of God. They will lament the great wickedness in the world and second the testimony of religious teachers that the degraded state of morals is caused by the desecration of Sunday. Great will be the indignation excited against all who refuse to accept their testimony. Mm. All right. I'm in so much trouble, y'all. Because why is this? We are now on Daniel 11, verse 45. I had to build up to that. I had to get everybody like on the same page so we can see what's happening in verse 45. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've we've spent quite some time. Mm -hmm. Listen. Daniel 11, verse 45 says this: He shall plant the tabernacle of his palaces between the seas in the glorious holy mountain, yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. So we're going to break it down like this, right? What is he shall plant? What is he shall plant? So Daniel 11 verse 40 is Satan appearing. And remember we talked about how Ellen White says in the great controversy that he's going to appear. Mm -hmm. He's going to heal people. Mm -hmm. He's going to be doing all kinds. It's not like he appears and says Sunday's the day. Mm -hmm. He appears and he's winning the world to himself. Mm -hmm. Then after that, after he heals the people and speaks some of the same gracious truths that Jesus spoke, right? Mm -hmm. Then he's going to say mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Sunday should be kept in honor of himself. Mm -hmm. All right? Watch this. He shall plant. Now, what does it mean to plant? Mm -hmm. We're just going to use line upon line. Notice this. Isaiah 5, uh, Isaiah 5 verse, verse 1. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. This is talking about God having a vineyard, vineyard which is Israel, mm -hmm. right? And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. O now, O inhabitants of, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, between me and my vineyard. So mm -hmm. what he planted, what God planted was Israel, mm -hmm. Jerusalem, right? His people. Mm -hmm. So, so his, his, his city. So if we just take what plants mean, plant means to set up mm -hmm. and particularly to set up a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Listen to me y'all to set up a kingdom. Watch Jeremiah 1 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. plant. So to plant something usually refers to planting a kingdom, mm -hmm. setting up a kingdom. Listen to me, y'all. The word build and plant, plant really are interchangeable. Right. Okay? In Jeremiah 18, 9, at what instance I speak concerning a nation or a kingdom to do what? Build. build it or to what? Plant it. Plant it. Mm -hmm. Again, I just want you to see that plant is synonymously be being used to set up a kingdom. Okay. Interestingly enough, in Daniel 9, 25, the Bible says that's the 70 week prophecy mm -hmm. where Jerusalem was going to be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build, mm -hmm. which is the same word used previously about building and planting. So, so God is here saying Jerusalem is going to be built again. Okay. It's a setting up of a kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just from this, what can we gather? Satan is going to attempt to set up a kingdom. A kingdom. Mm -hmm. He's going to plant or set mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. up which is synonymous with the image of the beast. Mm -hmm. What is the image of the beast? Well, what is the beast? The beast, the papacy was a church state entity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The image of the beast is an image of that, mm -hmm. a church state mm -hmm. entity. Mm -hmm. What Satan is going to plant is a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now here's what's interesting. There were four decrees to restore Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The one that we count is the, is the decree from 457 BC. It is at that time that in Ezra 725, thou Ezra, after the wisdom of God that is in thine hand, set magistrates and what? 
judges, mm -hmm. which may judge all the people that are beyond the river, all such as know the laws of thy God and teach them that know them not. And whosoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily upon him, whether it be unto death or to banishment or to confiscation of goods or to imprisonment. When God set his kingdom up, when Jerusalem was set up again, planted, it wasn't official until it was law. Mm -hmm. And whosoever broke the law of the kingdom yeah. okay. would be put to death. Mm -hmm. What we are reading here, y'all, is that Satan is going to set up an image, a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying my, my slides are not changing. Are y'all seeing the slides change? Okay. You have to wait a little bit. Yeah. You? In Isaiah 1, 26, I will restore thy judges at the first and thy counselors at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. It is when a city or a kingdom has judges and laws that makes it an official kingdom. People are saying no. <laughs> a lot of names. Okay, the slides aren't changing. Okay. All right. We're so just, you'll yeah. have to make them available. Yeah, well, I'm going to make those slides available, okay? It's changing our on our It's end. changing on our end, so I'm not sure. sure exactly. Yeah. Now, now watch this. So he shall plant. So we've already seen that plant is referring to setting up some kind of kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. He shall plant the tabernacles of his palaces. Mm -hmm. What is a tabernacle? What is the purpose of a tabernacle? A place to worship. It's a place of worship. Mm -hmm. Listen, y'all. A tabernacle is a place of worship. Mm -hmm. What is a palace? Mm -hmm. uh, for government. A palace is for kings. Our kings, yeah. Huh. Tabernacle, a place for worship. Mm -hmm. Palaces, it's for kings. Mm -hmm. Church and state. state. Mm -hmm. Satan is going to set up a government. Mm -hmm. Remember how Ellen White says every principle of our constitution will be repudiated? Mm -hmm. Satan is going to set up a worship system, a mm -hmm. kingdom based upon a worship system that, we, what, that will be enforced by kingly authority, mm -hmm. by state authority power, if mm -hmm. you will. Watch. In Exodus 15, verse 17, thou shalt bring them and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou has made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. Mm -hmm. Listen to them. Somebody just said, just like the Vatican. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nicole, oh no, Michelle, I used to wonder how that was possible, but now I see how. See, uh, this is the thing I'm, I'm, I'm talking about here, right? Mm -hmm. When people hear us and our version of, look, Sunday law is right around the corner because the Pope is going to say we should keep Sunday. And everybody's just going to be like, yeah, let's listen to the Pope. The right. Muslims, right. the atheists, the all because of bad weather, we're going to say, yeah, we should listen to the Pope. Right. No, no. You guys, that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. That literally doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Muslims are going to be like, nah, this is happening because y'all are not following Allah. Uh, right. You're not following what the Quran says. Right. Everybody's going to have their version of why it's not happening. Somebody has to come and settle mm -hmm. why things are going crazy. Right. Someone has to bring everybody on the same page. Mm -hmm. And that someone, y'all, is Satan. It is Satan himself. So just as God was going to plant his people in the mountain of his sanctuary, mm -hmm. so Satan is going to do the same thing. He's going to imitate. He's going to pretend to be God himself. Mm -hmm. He's going to set up, set up or plant his tabernacles mm -hmm. just as God planted his sanctuary. Right. We, yeah. And if he's counterfeiting Jesus, he has to, our God, he has to do those things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Watch. We will go into his tabernacles. We will what? Worship at his footstool. Tabernacles point to worship. 
tabernacles, point to worship. Let them make me a sanctuary. Why? Mm -hmm. That I may do what? Dwell Dwell among them. Mm -hmm. So what is Satan trying to do? He's saying, look, I'm here to dwell among you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to set up my tabernacles, my system Mm -hmm. of worship. Remember what Jesus said? When you see the abomination of desolation standing where? In the holy place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the tabernacle, if you will. Mm -hmm. In other words, when he is claiming to have authority to change God's law and command that whosoever does not obey this law should be put to death because it is the law of the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you guys, this is exactly what we're reading in a great controversy. This is exactly it. Mm -hmm. We're not talking anything about, you know, Turkey's going to do this and you know, uh, when, when the Muslims, do, no, y'all, that, uh, where in the Bible, where in the spirit of prophecy do you see anything about when Turkey right. does this mm-hmm. or when the global elites, mm-hmm. when the global elite, where do we see anything about the global elites mm-hmm. bringing about a Sunday law? Right. Right. Or different religions all coming together mm-hmm. and Muslims, you know, yeah. remaining Muslims and saying, oh, you know, and the new age is saying, yeah, you know what? We just thought it might be nice to obey the Pope because, you know, he's a he's a good guy and everybody likes him. Come on, y'all. Mm-hmm. That's not in the spirit of prophecy and it's not, not in the in Bible. The Bible. Mm-hmm. What is there is that the whole world will be converted, mm-hmm. as we talked about last mm-hmm. week, after the order of Satan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how are they converted? Mm-hmm. They're converted because, well, Jesus is here. That right. means we Muslims, mm-hmm. we were wrong this whole time. Mm-hmm. Here's Jesus in our face, and he's telling us we were wrong. He's telling us these are my people. And who's he pointing to? He's pointing to apostate Protestantism. Mm -hmm. He's pointing to the papacy. They were right all along, and y'all weren't listening to them. Mm -hmm. Now, under this threefold union, we're setting up, we will plant the tabernacles of the palaces, church Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. Church and Mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. Remember what Satan did in heaven? He defiled his sanctuaries. That's Ezekiel 28, 18. Mm-hmm. He's going to do the same. He's going to bring that defiled sanctuary, that defiled worship and enforce it on earth. Okay. Um, no, I mean, I think like right there where you just where you just said is so powerful. And I'm just looking at some of the comments um, or questions. Yes, uh, mm-hmm. to, to, to Shani. I don't know if I said that right. Mm-hmm. He will be setting up his version of heaven on earth. Remember what got Satan kicked out of heaven? He said, I will sit on the sides of the north. I want to be the king of the north. Mm-hmm. I want to be the king of the north. Mm-hmm. I want to sit upon the mount of the congregation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jesus is basically saying, when you see Satan doing the same thing on earth Mm -hmm. in person that he did in heaven, then you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you know. Okay. Um, I just got a few more slides and then we, if we could, we could go just a little bit longer. Um, let, let's try to keep moving. Okay. Um, we see here in second Kings chapter 20, verse 18, that the palace is the place of the King. Right. That's all I want you to see, right? The palace is a place of the King. Second Chronicles 36, 19, they burnt the house of God and break down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the palaces. So palaces represent state. Mm-hmm. It represents government. Mm-hmm. What the Bible is telling us in, in Daniel eleven forty five is that Satan will have a worship system, tabernacles, mm-hmm. in connection with his palaces, mm-hmm. government, church, and state. Mm-hmm. And it is not before he appears it is after he appears. Mm-hmm. Sunday law that begins in the United States mm-hmm. and then to the rest of the world mm-hmm. is initiated by Satan mm-hmm. himself, is initiated by the miracles. Remember, he performed great miracles. Mm-hmm. And Ellen White says, Satan, she doesn't say apostate Protestantism, mm-hmm. she says, Satan will make fire fall from the sky mm-hmm. to prove that he is God. Go look at the last, if you're, where did she say that? Go look at our, at our study last week. Mm-hmm. I, I shared the quote there. Mm-hmm. Satan. 
So it is these miracles that lead to the setting up of the image of the beast, Mm -hmm. which we are now seeing is a church and state entity Mm -hmm. that does away with our constitution Mm -hmm. and our religious freedom. You guys, listen to me. Listen to me. People keep saying stuff like, you know, oh, they're after our... Listen, whatever is going on right now pales. It's not this. It it's not this in any way, shape. Well, it pales in comparison, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? As I said before, the papacy is to Satan what John the Baptist was to Jesus. Mm-hmm. John the Baptist was not the one; he was just preparing the, the way, way for the one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're going to see this as we continue on in our study that 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 the papacy is simply. The the papacy and apostate Protestantism are preparing the way for the overmastering delusion. The papacy with Sunday sacredness, apostate Protestantism with uh, spiritualism. Mm-hmm. I mean, really both. I was just gonna say it's you really said both. It before I could say it, I was like, they're both setting up for spiritualism. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The spiritualism seeds, and I can't like like not say this enough, have um, just been planted. On so many levels, yes. In every religion, yep. In every the culture, whole world is ready for it. The whole, yes. I mean, that's so. So watch this, y'all. Satan's been working on that one for yes. a while. Yeah. Look at this. Look at the screen, y'all. The image of the beast is the very same thing as the tabernacles and the palaces. Tabernacles is church. Mm-hmm. Palaces, state, government. Mm-hmm. Who would have thought Daniel 1145 was so simple? Mm-hmm. He shall plant the tabernacles mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of his palaces. Now, now, watch this. Remember in Daniel 2? Remember in Daniel 2 how it's the iron and clay that's destroyed at the end of time? Mm-hmm. And y'all have heard me teach this before that the clay represents the church <laughs> and the state. I'm sorry. Rep- <laughs> and the state represents i'm sorry the iron represents the state mm-hmm. right or the or the government and the clay was ruling over the government so so watch this y'all the image of daniel 2 daniel 11 the tabernacle and palaces parallels the clay and the iron of daniel 2 mm-hmm. just put an eight in the chat if that's a revelation to you right now the tabernacles and palaces of Daniel 11 parallel the clay and iron of Daniel 2. If you want to know why the stone cut out without hands destroys the iron and clay, well, what happened? What did the iron and clay do? The iron and clay, y'all, is ultimately, is ultimately, because the iron and clay, it, it began in the days of the papacy, but it exists all the way up to the standing up of Michael. So the iron and clay is ultimately totally defined in Daniel eleven forty five. 45. Mm-hmm. It is Satan setting up the tabernacle of his palaces, mm-hmm. church and state with him as king of the north. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, just, there's just funny comments in here. <laughs> this, like, they, people are asking, do you sleep? Because uh, that's what I, you know what, it's sleep. funny. But they're just like this morning, uh, last night. I want to say before you answer that that there are also comments of you know someone said this. I understand the prophecy um, so clearly now, and it, praise God. Like it's very simple. Praise God. So that thing is very encouraging for us. Last that's the point of all this, absolutely. But do you sleep? Last <laughs> night I was asking the Lord how how is one to sleep with all this stuff in your in your mind? How mm-hmm. how do you go to sleep? Just how. How? All right, let's keep moving. We're, we're, we're almost done, y'all. Just give five more minutes and then, yeah. Okay, just, you have yeah. five, minutes. five minutes. Five minutes. Um, manuscript releases, volume 15, page 39. The mingling of church craft and state craft is represented by the iron and clay. This union is weakening all the power of the churches. Notice what she said. This union is weakening all the power of the churches. The investing the church with the power of the state will bring evil results. Men have almost passed the point of God's forbearance. They have invested their strength in politics Mm. 
and have united with the papacy, but the time will come when God will punish those who have made void his law and their evil work will recoil upon themselves. This is what's going on here, y'all. The mingling of church and state is represented by the iron and clay. It is the same thing as the tabernacle of his palaces. That is what leads to Michael, the true king of the north, mm -hmm. standing up. That's what leads to him standing up. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Psalm 48, verse 1. A song of praise for the sons of Korah. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation for the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, mm -hmm. the city of the great king. God is known in her what? Palaces mm -hmm. for refuge. And lo, the kings were assembled. They passed by. We have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgment. Satan is going to attempt to set up his own Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. that's, what he's that's what he's doing. His own Mount Zion, his own kingdom where he's the king of the north. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The word Armageddon. I just wanted y'all to see it here. In Revelation 16, he gathered them together in a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. The word Har means hill or mountain, mm -hmm. and Megiddo means appointed place mm -hmm. or place of meeting, mm -hmm. place of the congregation. Mm -hmm. In other words, Armageddon literally means the mount of the congregation. Mm -hmm. hmm. Where did Satan want to sit? Where did Satan want to sit? The on the sides of the, of the north, north, upon the mount of the congregation. Mm -hmm. The battle of Armageddon mm -hmm. is literally Satan seeking to sit on the mount of the congregation, which actually happens to be on the sides of the north in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. There's a south side, the east side, the south, the west side, and the north side. Mm -hmm. I did that all crazy. North, <laughs> south, east, east and west. West. The table of showbread with the 12 loaves of bread was located on the north side of the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is what Revelation 13, 14, and 15 is talking about with mm -hmm. the image of the beast. Mm -hmm. Satan sitting. <laughs> mm -hmm. The image of the beast is a theocracy consisting of dragon, beast, and false prophet. Right. Ellen White says through spiritualism, Satan appears as a benefactor of the race, mm -hmm. healing the diseases and the people and professing to prevent a, present a new and more exalted system of religious faith, the tabernacles mm -hmm. of his palaces. Mm -hmm. But at mm -hmm. the same time, he works as a destroyer. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Mm -hmm. I got mm -hmm. two minutes left. I'm going to throw something heavy. You have two minutes uh yeah. You should start Give wrapping me, up now. Yeah. Okay. You're going to get to your two minute part, All right. moment part, okay. part and not be able to. End. We're going to pick up here. We're going to pick up here when we, when we, uh, when we do our next uh, study. Okay. Mm -hmm. But what are the seas? Why does he plant the tabernacle of his palaces between the seas and the glorious holy mountain? By the way, the text mm -hmm. should read between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. You can't plant something between seas. No. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Mm -hmm. The seas represent the people. The glorious holy mountain rep is the glorious holy mountain is Mount Zion, which is where? In heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Satan is going to seek to intercept worship between mm -hmm. the people, the seas, and the glorious holy mountain, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay. The glorious holy mountain, which represents God's people on earth. I'm going to make it so that you cannot speak to them and they will not. I'm going to set my tabernacles in between the remnant and the lost. I'm going to set my tabernacles in between the lost and heaven. I'm going to intercept the worship of God. That's why ultimately, beloved, Satan is the one that will sit in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Now, the papacy has been doing that, yes, but ultimately, remember, the papacy is merely pointing to the ultimate man of mm -hmm. sin, which is Satan himself, which mm -hmm. is why mm -hmm. in Daniel 3, 
The image was the image of a man. Mm -hmm. They were bowing to this man of gold. And beloved, ultimately that man of gold is Satan Mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. That's the man of sin that everyone is going to bow down to, that the whole world is going to worship. That golden image set up by Babylon is symbolic of Satan himself. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to stop here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pass it back over to you. Mm -hmm. We still have more to cover on Daniel 1145. Yes, I know. And I think they know too. All right. Um, And I'm looking at some of the comments and people are uh, really starting to get it. Some of those who have been with us for the four weeks are, I think, helping some others who are, um, they're working with us, (laughs) trying to help some in the chat who are just um, coming maybe for the first time. So that is helpful. And and thank you. Um, But yeah, this is a good place to pause. And this is our encouragement. Um, There were four um, Sabbath school, um, messages like this studies that we've done together. So before today, so if you were, if you're here today, go back this week. And I guess we ought to say, we will not be here next week, the 23rd, but we will be back on the 30th. So that gives you two weeks to look at the, the first four, Yeah. because I think it's so, if you have not seen them, you need to see it Like you may have understood today, but watching, maybe you didn't, and watching those will help you understand. And if you understood, that will help you even understand it even better. So we encourage you to go back on YouTube, Power of the Lamb uh, YouTube page, and and watch uh, the first four. You have two weeks to do it. Um, And we, I'm just, yeah, I'm blessed by this understanding. I had some thoughts that I didn't get to throw in there and I'll tell you after (laughs) what I was thinking, but, um, yeah, this was, this was really, um, amazing. Um, just to, we're not done, but just to, um, enter into this study with all of you has been a blessing. Even uh, for me, it's been a blessing. I know it's been a blessing for him and he loves to share this, but it's so important, this understanding, um, for us as a church really, and for us to give to, it's important for us to the church now for us to understand so we can give it to the world because we need to do that. Yeah, We want Jesus to come. Um, we want to leave this earth, see our, our real loved ones um, who are sleeping in Jesus now. Again, it is so very important that we do this. Um, but I want to thank you for watching. And if you uh, live locally here in the Bay Area, again, we um, are having divine worship service at, at our local church at Campbell at 1130. So you're um, invited to come to that. For those of you who are watching from all around the world and here in America, we will uh, be live at 1130 Pacific Standard Time. So just in about a little, uh, little over an hour Uh, we will be live again for our divine worship service. So you don't want to miss that as well. Um, And we're just going to close with prayer. All right, let's do it. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, speaking to us, Lord. We thank you for opening the eyes of your people. Lord, we have a world to warn, and we have something quite really just unbelievable, but yet it's true that we're to warn them of, Lord. Help us to get a greater understanding of these verses. and, and help us to be able to confidently teach these verses, Lord, uh, so that people will be prepared for the overmastering delusion that will come upon this world. Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity again to, to worship with you, to worship with one another. And uh, bless us now, Lord. Um, we thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering this prayer because we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. God Happy bless. Bye-bye.